Hello, everyone. Konnichiwa. Welcome to Tokyo. It's my pleasure to speak to you at the start of Japan FinTech Festival. To me, <coughs> our partnership with Japan FinTech Festival is crucial. SMBC has been supporting Singapore FinTech Festival for eight years. Last year, I went to Singapore to join the festival, and it was fantastic. Japan is our home, and it is always our top priority to contribute to the growth of Japan and Asia. I truly appreciate the partnership with Elevandi. Also, I would like to say big thank you to Japan's FSA for organizing the whole Japan FinTech Week. I'm Akio Isoa. I'm leading SMBC's Digital Innovation as Group Chief Innovation Officer. Also, I have another role. It is to support startup co companies in Japan. Today, I hope to share my views about Japan and Asia. So what matters most in this year? I believe many of you know that 2024 is the year of Dragon. This Dragon is generated by SMBC GAI, our own version of ChatGPT. More specifically, in Japan, we use Chinese Zodiac that has 60 different types of years with combination of two elements. 2024 is the year of Kinoe Tats. Tats means a dragon. A dragon is a symbol of growth and strength. Kinoe means stems of wood. This means the beginning of things. With Kinoe and Tats, it means spring sunlight will help everything to grow. 2024 is great timing to start and challenge new things. For 2024 Beyond and Connect, these are my keywords. For Japan and Asia to grow, it is important for us to go beyond boundaries and to connect ideas and insights. So let's talk about Japan. In a nutshell, Japan is finally awakening. As you all know, the Nikkei stock price just hit the historical high since the peak of bubble economy 34 years ago. This can be the end of so-called lost three decades. Yes, it is good news. But let us not to be too optimistic. The latest quarterly GDP growth has turned into negative. Also, we should carefully look at important factors around Japan's economy, such as some confusion in politics elections in major countries like the United States and geopolitical situations in the world. We should stay calm. However, probably, Japan is finally awakening. We are in the year to start new things. Let us move beyond boundaries. Now, I would like to share three major changes in Japan's economy. I see and feel these changes every day. First one is startup. I'm leading startup business in SMBC since last April. I have met with over 100 startup companies, and I'm 100% sure that the rise of Japan's startup eco ecosystem is real. Talent. When I started my career, the best and the brightest young talent like me choose large uh, corporates like Subitomo Bank. No one joined the startup or started old business. But now, situation is completely different. Those 100 founders that I met are the best and the brightest, I can guarantee. And lots of new fresh graduates from top universities go to start up. Talented professionals from traditional companies like SMBC are 
entering into startup. I see this as a big positive trend because the rise of startup is a huge opportunity for Japan. Born global, let me take Gojo and the company as an example. Gojo is a microfinance company they founded in Tokyo, but they are born global. Gojo's mission is big. They are going to be a private sector world bank. They provide microfinance for individuals in emerging countries such as Cambodia, Myanmar, and Sri Lanka. They learn business across Asia. I'm proud to work with Gojo by providing debt finance from Japan directly into their India business. Also, SMBC provides capital into their new venture fund called Andish Capital. Gojo is just one of many born global startups in Japan, going beyond boundaries and globe. The second one is culture. The culture of a traditional large company is changing. If you come to SMBC head office close to Tokyo station, you will be surprised. Many of us do not wear suits or a tie. I don't either. And this is not just for SMBC. Career model is changing. You may think lifetime employment is common in Japan, but it is not anymore. About 10 years ago, I was leading digital transformation of our retail banking app. I tried to hire some professional designers. I really wanted designers because good design is a key for good banking app. But the issue was we didn't have a proper framework to hire professional designers. So I created a new employment model for them, including salary, employment, contract, and everything. Also, let them wear whether they want. It was uncommon in SMBC. It was uncommon in Japan's traditional business. Since then, the situation has changed. Employment and dress code are just some of the symbolic changes. By the way, the new app then became a big hit. We got millions of downloads and we even got so many hours. This is not the point. Now, we know that, that diverse talent is crucial to our business success. We, as a leader, need to connect the different types of skills, experience, and ideas of our people. The third one is population. You may think the declining population in Japan is a threat, but actually, it is an opportunity for us to change. Currently, we have 120 million people in 2050. It will become less than 100 million. So what are we doing? Technology. To tackle with declining population, Japan has been adopting new technologies like robot and avatar, career, now we see so many senior business persons are trying to start their own businesses in their 50s, 60s, or even 70s. Global. Going global is not just for large companies, a large corporates. Uh, so many small and medium enterprises are trying to go global. Let's take Dasai as an example. Do you know Dasai? Yes, it's Japanese sake. Dasai has its main brewery in Yamaguchi Prefecture, a tiny town located seven hours away from Tokyo. They used to be a small sake brewery in the countryside of Yamaguchi. They were not the best even in the small town. Mr. Sakurai, its current chairman, made a bold decision to go global. They 
innovated themselves on how to brew sake. They made a top quality sake. They started exporting and it became a big success. And last year, they even built a new sake brewery in New York City. I was strongly encouraged by Mr. Sakurai saying, we should go beyond the boundaries, break the status quo. Otherwise, we will just die. Startup, culture, population, Japan is now awaking. We should go beyond boundaries. We should connect the dots. For Asian countries and companies, this is opportunity. It is opportunity for you to work with Japan. Now, let me share some of SMBC's initiatives in the digital innovation space. I believe this is a good example of Japan's traditional company try to, trying to innovate and going beyond the boundaries. Number one, we are transforming the banking. Olive is new banking super app we launched last year in Japan. Olib connects the dots in person finance. Banking, investment, insurance, points, wealth, wealth management, and everything you need for your personal finance, all are in Olive. Genius Bank is another digital bank that we started in the United States. We are going beyond geography and now entering retail business in the U.S. It is a big challenge. Number two, in-house venture business. We are trying to be more than a bank. Sastana is a carbon accounting software. We developed Sastana by ourselves. We have never seen a bank from anywhere in the world develop the carbon accounting tool by themselves. This is very unique, but Sastana is our strategic choice because for our corporate customers, carbon emission is one of the top agendas and it is our mission to support it. Also, now, we can leverage our customers' real data of carbon emissions from Sastana. And we can provide wider solutions such as green finance and consulting. SMBC WeBox is another venture. We help our corporate customers to improve their employee engagement. SMBC WeBox provides employee engagement survey tool and this is going to be another non-financial solution. Plus Medi is in personal health data space. This may sound like far from banking, but it is actually similar to banking. As a bank, we are trusted by our customers and we receive their precious asset money as deposit. Plus Medi stores our customers another precious asset personal health data. We work together with hospitals and medical software companies. These are only a few examples of our in-house venture businesses. The point is we are trying to be a solution provider by beyond banking. Last but not least, Asia. SMBC Group has 110,000 employees globally, and about a half are in Asia outside Japan, 20,000 in Indonesia, 20,000 in India, and so many in other countries. Over the last 10 years, we have expanded our Asia business massively. In Indonesia, we have acquired a local bank called BTPN. In India, we have acquired Flaton India, one of the leading non-banks. Now, it is rebranded into SMFG India Credit. In Vietnam, 
we have invested into VP Bank and FE Credit. In Philippines, we have invested into RCBC. The whole idea is to create a second or third or even more SMBCs in those growing countries. Last year, we have launched our corporate venture capital SMBC Asia Rising Fund. This is 200 million US dollar fund targeting into Asian fintech companies. We are strategic investor. We are going to create synergies between our Asia business like BTPN and SMFG India with growing Asian fintechs. I'm not saying SMBC is doing perfect. In Japan, so many large companies are trying to do new things. Let me recap. Japan is awaking. 2024 is time to try new things. Let us go beyond boundaries. Let us connect ideas and insights. In Japan and Asia, we can work together. Thank you very much.